Monsignor uh, Sanchez de Toca Alameda uh, serves at, first of all, we're, we're so happy he got here. He was on Chicago Times, not South Bend. But he serves as the Undersecretary of the Pontifical Council for Culture in the Vatican. He's also in charge of questions concerning the interface of science and religion. He holds a degree in philosophy and in theology, and his research area focuses mainly on the relations between science, culture, and religion, interreligious and intercultural dialogue. So he specialized in the social and cultural implications of science for theology and the spiritual life. And he is the co-author of one book, several papers on the history of the Galileo Affair. Uh, he currently is the general coordinator of the Science, Theology, and the Ontological Quest, or Stock Project, which you'll hear more. And his research and teaching, uh, which is this research and teaching program of a set of uh, Roman universities to uh, investigate broad broader topics where science and religion converges. We're deeply honored to have Monsignor de Toca re represent the Pontifical Council for Culture in our workshop and uh, offer us greetings uh, both of himself and also Archbishop Rav uh, and Cardinal Ravasi, who's president of the Pontifical Council. So, Monsignor. Thank you very much, Father MacDonald, Professor Sloan, dear friends, this will be just a short institutional message. I feel really deeply honored to convey to you a warm message from the Pontifical Council for Culture and its president, Cardinal Gianfranco Ravasi, at this opening session of the summer work workshop on ethical, philosophical, legal, and theological dimensions of adult stem cell uh, research. The Pontifical Council for Culture, created by blessed John Paul II in 1982, of which Father Hesburgh was, was a member since the beginning, has the mission of fostering dialogue with contemporary culture, a culture which is deeply impressed and influenced by science. Dialogue with the world of science and the search for cultural implications of scientific research is therefore one of the main tasks pursued at the Pontifical Council for Culture. Stem cell research and regenerating therapy are today one of the most promising fields in contemporary medicine. They will affect us in a way we can now only guess and they will dramatically change our perception of the human body, of sickness, of our very life and of culture itself. As people engaged in contemporary scientific, philosophical and ethical de debate, we cannot escape the deep existential questions this field of medical research poses, which in some sense are even more important than the ethical issues linked to them. In fact, when we talk about stem cells, philosophical and political debate tends to concentrate or to focus exclusively on ethical issues, whether it is appropriate or not to use embryonic stem cells. As we all are well aware, the problem, as in the case of any other human organ, is the way embryonic stem cells are obtained and transplanted into other human bodies. It is never listed to deliberately destroy one human life, especially when it is as small as an embryo, in order to save another. In the case of adult stem cells, the ethical objections do not subsist, although, like any other form of medical therapy, their use must comply with the general deontological principles of medicine. In one address to participants of, as, in a symposium organized by the Pontifical Academy of Life, Pope Benedict XVI remembered the Church's commitment to alleviate people's suffering and stated that somatic stem cell research deserves approval. It's a quotation already done by Father MacDonald. But I think that to limit 
discussion on stem cell research just to ethical issues would be a form of reductionism. The growing and successful use of adult stem cells in regenerative therapies demands a broader and more general reflection that we try to figure out how the future of medicine will be and how it will affect the idea of men and women, their place in the world, or in other words, human culture. In this way, I hope, we will be able to overcome the long shadow of the Galileo affair. It has become customary that whenever the church's magisterium opposes a moral veto to some medical practices based on revelation and a Christian anthropology, the myth of Galileo is evoked and some journalist or scientist cry, we are facing another Galileo case. I am firmly convinced the Galileo affair was and remains unique and that in the case of ethical vetoes in the field of biomedicine, concrete human lives are at stake and not just stars and planets. Nevertheless, the challenge we are facing is that we as Christians or as people engaged in science and philosophy walk along the road with scientific research in order to explore all its potentialities, to understand its logic and to sustain scientists in their efforts instead of just issuing ethical statements after scientific research is done. This is the attitude the Pontifical Council for Culture wants to support and the reason why it is one of the partner institutions in this workshop. Twelve participants, I wish a fruitful work and a new impulse in favor of what Paul VI call in Popularum Progressio a true humanism, humanisme integral, to seek the good of the whole person and of every person. Thank you very much and good work.